Welcome to our exploration of what the Bible says about hell. In this discussion, we will delve into the biblical teachings related to hell, examining different perspectives and interpretations. Join us as we seek to gain a deeper understanding of this important topic. The use of the term hell can sometimes be confusing, as it can refer to different concepts. In this article, we will specifically explore the common understanding of hell as the lake of fire, which represents the eternal place of punishment for those who are lost. Due to widespread misconceptions and falsehoods perpetuated by myths and popular culture, heaven is often misunderstood. However, the understanding of hell is even more clouded with ignorance and misconceptions. Factors such as medieval art, imaginative literature, and a lack of biblical knowledge contribute to this confusion. Additionally, the avoidance of discussing hell by some pastors and Bible teachers further compounds the problem. Although it is an unpleasant topic, we should not shy away from addressing it since Jesus himself taught about hell. According to the teachings of the Bible, hell is a real place, Mark 9 verse 43, where sinners face punishment, Matthew 5 verse 22. It is characterized as a realm of torment, Revelation 14 verse 11, and is described as eternal, Mark 9 verse 48. Initially, hell was created for Satan and his angels, Matthew 25 verse 41, emphasizing its intended purpose. Dispelling some of the more prevalent myths about hell is useful in adding to our biblical understanding. Myth 1, the devil's headquarters are in hell. However, the reality is that the devil is not currently in hell. The lake of fire, often referred to as the second death, will receive its first occupants after the millennial reign of our Lord Jesus, Revelation 20 7, 10. It is important to note that hell is a place of torment, Luke 16 verse 23, 24, Revelation 20 verse 10, dispelling the nonsensical notion of cartoonish images depicting devilish figures joyfully wielding pitchforks while dancing around a ring of fire. Instead of reveling with his legions of demons, Satan will suffer in hell. Myth 2 Hell is reserved solely for the worst of evildoers such as cruel dictators and serial killers. However, the truth is that while there may be varying degrees of eternal punishment, Luke 12 47, 49, anyone who rejects God's mercy will face his wrath, John 3 verse 18. There are only two options, heaven or hell, there is no third alternative. Although this reality may unsettle the average person, it is important to recognize that there will be more unrepentant individuals from various professions, such as barbers, plumbers, middle school teachers, bricklayers, airline pilots, and accountants in hell than infamous tyrants like Hitler, Stalin, or Mao. The reason Stalin, for instance, would be consigned to the lake of fire is not solely due to his acts of murdering millions of his own countrymen. Rather, Stalin, like any unrepentant person, including an unrepentant librarian, will suffer in hell because they rejected God's mercy and scorned Christ. The severity of one's earthly sins does not determine their eternal destination, it is their response to God's offer of salvation that determines their fate. Myth 3, a loving God would not send people to hell. If we define love as an indulgent, enabling, and misguided sentimentality, then it would indeed contradict the idea of eternal punishment. However, it is crucial not to confuse God with a drowsy old man who passively ignores mischievous behavior from his grandchildren while rocking in a chair. God is just, Romans 12 verse 19, and he will administer retribution for evil, 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 6. Instead of accusing God of cruelty, we should remember that hell is reserved for those who, of their own volition, reject God's mercy, Hebrews 2 verse 3. Salvation is freely offered to all who seek it, Ephesians 2 colon 8, 9, but the world is filled with individuals whose minds and hearts are consumed by earthly matters, leaving no room for what God willingly offers them. 
In the end, hell will be the destination for those who settle for less than God's best, choosing to disregard His grace and salvation. Myth 4, a just God would not send people to hell. However, this argument may be the least persuasive. If not hell, where else would a just God send rebellious individuals who obstinately refuse to repent of their wickedness? Even within our flawed criminal justice system, offenders are sent to prison. Should a just God reward unrepentant evildoers with eternal bliss? Furthermore, those who will inhabit hell are individuals who deliberately avoided any connection, companionship, and communication with the one who created them. Why should we assume that the impenitent sinner who turned away from God's presence here on earth would find happiness in his intimate company in heaven? In his characteristic succinct manner, the Christian writer and apologist C.S. Lewis eloquently expressed, there are only two types of people in the end, those who say to God, thy will be done, and those to whom God says, in the end, thy will be done, the great divorce, signature classics, page 339. Hell will be populated by individuals who have chosen to be there. Myth 5. Hell is merely a scare tactic to enforce a particular brand of allegiance or behavior. However, if we acknowledge the reality of hell, it is wise to have a healthy fear of it. If hell were only a scare tactic, then could the same be said about warnings against tobacco use, drunk driving, or income tax fraud. Jesus himself issued warnings about the dangers of hell, Matthew 10 verse 28. Would he have alerted us to these dangers if they were not real? Are those who deny the existence of hell somehow wiser, more intelligent, or better informed than the Son of God? To deny the perils of hell is to cast doubt on the very words of our Savior. Hell is a realm characterized by profound misery and unending suffering, Within its confines, torment and anguish persist without respite, Revelation 14 verse 11. Whether the flames are literal or symbolic of an even greater form of distress, one thing is certain, all the temporal allurements this world presents, wealth, fame, reputation, power, or sensual gratification, are vastly insignificant compared to the eternal consequence of forfeiting our souls, Mark 8 colon 36, 38. It is crucial to understand that God takes no pleasure in the demise of the wicked, Ezekiel 8 verse 32. He derives no satisfaction from those who willingly choose hell over a relationship with him. On the contrary, God's love for the world was so immense that he sent his son to rescue and redeem us, John 3 verse 16. The death and resurrection of Jesus bring good news to lost sinners who are willing to believe that their debt of sin has been fully paid. Those who receive God's grace through faith in Christ will experience eternal life in His presence. Jesus is the ultimate gift from God. There is nothing greater that God can offer us than His Son. Those who have placed their faith in Jesus Christ have no reason to fear death and the grave. Instead, they eagerly anticipate the glorious future that awaits them. However, there are individuals whose hearts remain hardened, who are more preoccupied with pursuing worldly treasures. This is a tragic state of affairs, for Christ has triumphed over sin, death, and hell on our behalf, offering us the opportunity for redemption and eternal life. Thank you for watching, we hope you have gained insights into the Bible through this discussion. Please consider subscribing and clicking on the notification icon for future updates. Stay tuned for more episodes where we delve into critical issues found in the Bible.